Uh, this is the same person that we know that has, on countless posts, has spread misinformation, encouraged parents to refuse routine vaccinations for their children, which you just heard, by the way, and even con- compared our pandemic efforts responses to the Holocaust. I want to just actually read something which is in the public record. I'm not um, uh, saying anything that's not in the public record. Uh, that a member of this committee actually said, the same person that is actually attacking vaccines, said that vaccinated employees get a, vaccine logo, a vaccination logo just like the Nazis forced Jewish people to wear a gold star. I want to I read that uh, again. Vaccinated employees get a vaccination logo just like the Nazis forced Jewish people to wear a gold star. Uh, th- that is the level of uh, insanity and attacks that we are having here as we actually debate the, lo- the lives saved around vaccinations. Now, this same member has also held sh- shadow public hearings promoting ideas that COVID is a bioweapon to target people of specific races and that vaccines, and I quote, cause turbo cancers. I want, I want to read you this, this quote, and, and it's in the, again in the public record at a, at a hearing. Um, have the COVID vaccines resulted in an increase in cancers and are turbo cancers real? Now, Mr. Chairman, this is, um, in my opinion, just uh, insanity. Uh, we know that's not the case. Dr. Marks, can you clarify once again for the American people, do the COVID vaccines cause turbo cancers? I'm a hematologist, oncology that, oncologist that's board certified. I don't know what a turbo cancer is. It was a term that was used first in a paper uh, in mouse experiments describing an inflammatory response. There are, there, we have not detected any increase in cancers uh, with the COVID-19 vaccines. Thank you, and I, and I, I thank you for, for correcting but, the record. But may, may I just add something here? I do need to apologize to the thousand or so parents of children who are under four years of age who have died of COVID-19 who were unvaccinated um, because there were deaths and are continuing to be deaths in children. And that is the reason why they need to get vaccinated. Thank you. Let me just say this. You listen to Marjorie Taylor Greene or her band of idiots cosplaying as doctors at your own peril. Green has a bachelor's degree in business administration from a college that doesn't even have a medical school. She is not a doctor. She didn't do a residency. She doesn't have a medical license. I would be floored if she could pass high school biology. And look, doing your own research in the bowels of Facebook.com is bad enough. But when that research yields you the idea that something called turbo cancer is real, then you really have lost the plot. And look, I know that COVID and vaccine stuff has been litigated to the ends of the earth, but just to give some top line information, during the last surge in December of 2022, according to the CDC, rates of COVID hospitalizations were 16 times higher in unvaccinated adults than with fully vaccinated adults. And COVID hospitalizations were 49 times higher among the unvaccinated versus those with boosters. Those are hospitalizations. Now let's look at deaths. In November, unvaccinated adults had 15 times the risk of dying from COVID compared with fully vaccinated adults. And those same unvaccinated adults had 68 times the risk of dying compared with those who've been boosted. But maybe those numbers are still too difficult to understand. Fine. Let's use visual aids. Here's hospitalizations in both New York City and Seattle from November to January among the vaccinated and unvaccinated. Notice a difference? How about deaths in New York City and Seattle among the vaccinated versus the unvaccinated? Notice a the difference there? So the data is beyond beyond clear. The vaccine is effective and is saving the lives of virtually everyone who takes it. Green would continue her junk science parade with comments like this one. Here we have, let's talk about the reports on VAERS. Some people in here are trying to belittle these reports, but these reports come from people, people that died, people that got injured. And in December, in the middle of December, I think it was the 10th or the 11th, the first vaccine was approved, it was authorized under emergency use. Boom, 10,596 reports in less than a month. 2021, 706,767 reports on VAERS for vaccine injuries and deaths. 2022, it it was 206,676. 2023, and it went going down because the mandates stopped. And look, I'm not going to spend much time on this because, again, she is getting her information from the Facebook University School of Medicine. But first of all, she points to the number of reported deaths in the Federal Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System, or VAERS, despite the fact that none of the reports submitted are even vetted. 
And second of all, with regard to the number of folks who've died, remember, people die anyway, meaning that if 95% of seniors, for example, are vaccinated, then there is a pretty high likelihood that people who happen to be vaccinated will die regardless of their vaccination status. Even the CDC itself found no causal link whatsoever between the vaccine and those deaths. So someone dying at some point after getting vaccinated does not automatically mean that the vaccine killed them. It just means that if almost all older Americans are vaccinated, then you will inevitably have people who die who are also vaccinated. Marjorie Taylor Greene might want to spend a few moments in all of her deep dive research into learning that sometimes people pass away. But all of that nonsense aside, the problem comes with the fact that Republicans have decided to turn a public health issue into a culture war issue, because when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Republicans only know how to operate one setting, culture wars. From the war on Christmas to M&Ms to books to drag shows, they only know how to have these fights. It is the only place they feel comfortable. Not governing, not working for their constituents, not lowering healthcare costs or adding jobs or protecting the climate, but perpetuating stupid fucking battles over stuff that we shouldn't even need to fight about. And while putting a picture of baby Jesus on the Starbucks cup really has no impact on people's lives, vilifying a life-saving vaccine does. But because everything needs to be a fight, Republican thought leaders, many of whom availed themselves of the very vaccine they whine about, are perfectly content to wage this fight too. Not because it doesn't work, because clearly it does, but because they need fodder for a cheap political win. And if that means their supporters die at exponentially higher rates than those who are given accurate information, then that is obviously a price that they're willing to pay. And by the way, to the point of those folks who vilify this vaccine while availing themselves of its benefits, look no further than this segment right here. But the damage had already been done from that. And you need to find some safe middle ground where people know that the vaccine is safe for you, oh. but you don't... Oh. Well, what do you mean? You look, you're fine. You're vaccinated. What do you, oh, <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> it's your, it's your segment. Funny how Republicans like Judge Jeanine are quick to derive the benefits, but when it comes to their audience, well, you see, she couldn't possibly encourage them to get the same protections that she gets because after all, she's got a political agenda to sell. And so she will shamelessly pretend that the same vaccine currently protecting her is so dangerous that no one else should get it. Protection for me, not for thee. And I know that if Republicans could actually feel shame, this would be a much different country right now, but it's still worth me mentioning that the doctor in the initial clip pointing out one specific subset of the population that is vulnerable to COVID is children, whose parents may have not opted to vaccinate them because they were gullible enough to believe the purveyors of disinformation like Marjorie Taylor Greene. So she and her colleagues will grandstand about how they want to protect the children, especially from those evil groomers that they've labeled the entire Democratic Party, and yet at the same time, time, they're pushing junk science that has led to the deaths of those very kids. At this point, if you are looking to protect kids, keep them and their parents as far away from Republican disinformation as is humanly possible. And of course, that's to say nothing of a party that brands itself pro-life that has become so focused on opposing the Democrats that they have literally adopted a position that is killing them. And I'm not even being facetious. More Republicans are dying as the direct result of this insistence on putting culture wars above reality. At this point, I have to wonder, on behalf of the self-proclaimed pro-life party, does any of the Republican Party's branding still apply? So look, nothing I say right now is going to convince anyone about anything as far as the vaccine goes. But the science is clear and the numbers are clear. Death rates and hospitalization rates are exponentially higher for those who didn't get vaccinated. And Marjorie Taylor Greene and her fellow science deniers know that, all the while doing their level best to ensure that their own base remains defenseless. If you are looking for one more example of how the right embraces a political agenda that doesn't take into account in the slightest whether their supporters or constituents live or die, their stance on vaccines is exactly that. Because apparently, anything is worth a political win, even if they have to lose a few hundred thousand supporters in the process. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you want to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.